there's nothing quite like seeing a great concert. Same could be said for a great play or a great performance of any kind. Um, for me, it was always music. To see performers that you admire and to share that room with them for just a little while, to me, is a, is a special thing. There are lots of books about Texas A&M uh, and all the wonderful things that go along with it, but there wasn't one about concerts. And uh, I thought, this is a story that needs to be told, and I'd really like to be the one who tells it and shares these things from all these people that I talked to. My book, Live from Aggieland, Legendary Performances in the Brazos Valley, was published in 2017 by the Texas A&M University Press. I'm always eager to hear their you know, memories of those events. Um, and I think being there at a legendary show means something. It means something to have been here for the last moment of Garth Brooks's world tour. Um, and it means something to be here to see Elvis when he wasn't yet known as Elvis. Johnny Cash and Nat King Cole and Willie Nelson and R.E.M. and the Ramones and all these all these names. It's, it's an impressive history. I think it adds to sort of the cultural fabric here. I first started working with Elton John. One of the first things he said, he like knew uh, where I was going to college. He's like, oh, yeah, Colin, you go to Texas A&M, right? I'm like, yeah, like, how do you know that? Uh, and he was like, you're still going there, right? I was like, yeah, I'm in my last semester. It's COVID semester, but like, I'm, I'm still attending. Yeah, and he goes, oh yeah, one of my very first uh, concerts was in College Station in the States. I was like, that's crazy. All these like country, like goats and all of these like really famous musicians kind of like got their start like in College Station through these like venues and stuff. And it's like, it's cool to see the historical significance of music kind of get rubbed off on College Station. Surfaces was something I started in high school. Started watching like a bunch of like MTV and I was like, man, I really wonder how a song is like made. Like how do people make songs? Forrest, he was also doing the same thing at Baylor, just like making music, throwing it on SoundCloud, you know, just for the fun of it. So he found the one of the EPs I had just released in 2016 and he liked what I was doing. And then I checked out his stuff and I was like, oh, I like what you're doing. Like we should, you know, like you should drive in or I can drive into you and like, you know, just see if we can collaborate and stuff. We recorded like four or five songs in like a weekend. And at that point it was like more than just a collaboration. I was like, would you just want to step in and be the male lead of services and, you know, help me write songs and help produce and stuff. And, and just, you know, history from there. I lived in this little blue house on Montclair in College Station. I lived in the, the middle bedroom, so it was like there was no windows in there. And we would put the mic in the closet, we'd shove the clothes left and right and just stick the mic in the middle. And then Forrest would go in there and he'd just close the door with all of my clothes in there. And we were just, you know, recording all the songs, uh, or pretty much all the songs for the second album in that little room. The song that really took off for us was Sunday Best. I mean, over a very short span, um, the world kind of took it by storm and it went triple platinum. And uh, I think it's over like two or three billion streams, which is like kind of unfathomable to think about. I passed that house and I'm like, man, the amount of memories that are in that house and like, that album wouldn't have got made if it wasn't for that house. That song, or all those songs, like we had probably recorded like, 20, 30 songs in that house, like none of that would exist without that house, without this experience, without uh, me going to college, going to AM specifically. I, I think it's great that current students are in bands and playing around town, and it's great that there are venues that focus on local music and not just bringing in sort of regional acts. Um, that's a big part of, of what makes the local music scene happen. It's not just Garth Brooks coming to town. It's shows that happen every week or weekend. Local music scenes are important because they're just so much fun, especially when it's any new original band making up something new. It's the most fun for me to see like how they present themselves and how they sound and what is the drummer doing that's a little bit different or what's the guitarist doing. 
the college station music scene is very diverse. You have us playing rock music, there's a lot of indie artists, there's country, there's everything. Every year, new people coming in, the student population is always getting bigger, uh, people from different places coming and bringing their influences. So uh, every year you see like an influx of just like new bands starting. We all met through Fish Camp. I posted on Snapchat, who wants to start a band? Seems cool. Uh, at the time I was a kid bassist, so I'd only had a year of experience under my belt. Um, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, but it's really worked out since then. What separates Kitsch is that the concerts are kind of a whole experience. You have to actually put in energy and we'll give it back. It's just, uh, it's very high energy for all of us. We all get off stage and we're sweating like crazy because we just want to give everything we got. You walk around on campus now and you see random people, people I've never met uh, wearing our merch. And I'm like, wow, like that means so much to us having a community that backs us, that brought us to this point where we can get those bigger shows and we can start playing with these bigger names. Because ultimately our goal is not to be a student band. We want to get out there, get out of our hometown and try to make a difference, try to get our music in people's ears, try to have people in other towns and other countries even listen to our stuff. And, that starts here in College Station. Aggie Land is a special kind of place. Artists make memories here. Garth Brooks remembered his positive experience when he played here in the early 90s when he was looking for a place to end his world tour in 1998. The friendliness of, of uh, Aggie Land means a lot and means that those artists come back. We can go back and we just look back at who was here in the past and what did they bring and what was that like? It is fun to look at that and be like, oh, we can do that. Like, if we did it then, we can do it now. Reed is a great test site for them to just kind of get a feel of what it's gonna really be like in a larger arena and as they move on. The sheer number of seats in Kyle Field are what really set it apart and have made it something that people are really kind of eyeballing right now and like, hmm. What about doing all a stadium tour? And there's so many stadium tours currently going around that we're starting to hear a little bit of buzz about Kyle Field. And what if we did one at Kyle Field? We're all working towards being becoming more of a music scene, entertainment scene here in Bryan College Station. All the, the music that's happening around and outside of Texas A&M, but in the community is very exciting because it just means we're vibrant and they're selling tickets and, and our community wants it. We're laying the groundwork. Um, we will see more special events. We're gonna see more entertainment on this campus. Just be patient because it's coming. <laughs> <laughs>